Hey everybody, this is Way to Fail, back with more Lords of the Realm, where if you were watching last time, you know that I am in trouble. You see this little white pip right here in Essex? That is the Earl marching against me. He did send me a courtesy note that said, oh by the way, ho-hum, I have units passing through. But I promise you, passing through very likely means going to my home area, taking Essex, and leaving me with two counties. Now what I did do last time was I did raise an army of Danish swordsmen just to play defense here. I did take my army of Norman crossbows down here to try and defend my area as best as possible. But right now, there are 50 troops, and I know that because of this screen, there are 50 troops marching through my area, and I have a choice here. I could try and take them head on. I don't have any mercenaries to let me fight them out. So really, at this point, it's just a matter of what do I do? Do I let them take the county? No, I don't want to do that. So, what kind of weapons do I have? I have a hundred swords I can raise, which I really wanted to use with these guys to do a combined arms force. And I really hope that the uh, knight doesn't decide to backdoor me, which is probably exactly what he'll do. But at this point, I don't think I have too much of a choice here. I think I'm going to have to raise an army of swordsmen. And I don't like digging into my population this hard, but... So as you can see, the happiness is down, down, down significantly because I took out a bunch of their population, but you know what? It was necessary. My people's morale is poor, but their health is good. So maybe with less people here, I can afford to double ration, and that'll get me back up. That's what we hope, anyway. So I don't need as many farmers. We're not going to have as good of a harvest this year, but the Earl forced my hand, unfortunately. So we're going to get less grain, but we'll get more cacao. And yeah, that harvest is going to suck. Let's see here. I won't lose any fields if I do this, so we'll go ahead and do that. But this is sort of a necessary choice. Let's just go through and make sure my county management is okay. I can send more cattle ranchers over. Probably a good idea here. Just to try and get as many people on the fields as possible. I do want to get as high of a harvest as I can. Let's see here. Avian knights are not going to do me any good, and I can't afford them anyway. So people are going to eat here. I want to make sure that I'm on normal ration, though. Same here. We're all on normal ration now. All those good times before are uh, long past. We're gone from the happy days of just everyone gets to eat as much as they want to the... Now you get to only eat a little bit, so happiness of 20, not terrible. So let's start this by actually fighting these troops that are going through. And this is probably going to force the Earl's hand, but it's better than him marching on me. So let's see what happens. So 50 versus 100, the pigs versus the lords, and it is 50 swordsmen versus 100 swordsmen. I was really hoping that that would be uh, not swordsmen. So I could offer quarter here, but their morale is a little too good for me to realistically do that. This is actually an army where my crossbowmen would do fantastic against. Let's see here, I may be taking on the Earl instead of the Knight. Definitely don't want to be pincered by both of them because they just have way too many forces. We'll kind of do our catty corner, see if I can get them into a fight here. Our morale is now equal because I'm maybe going to be drawing first blood. I do have way more people here, but because it's swords versus swords, I'm going to be losing quite a bit of units here, a lot more than I'd like. But it's necessary. It's either that or those 50 swords just take me out entirely. So let me see if I can get them when they're under 30 units here. Offer quarter. And they will fight till the last man. Well, shit. Maybe when I get them under 20. Or when I get them under a fourth, their morale's dropping significantly. And they disperse. So I still have 76 swords left, which is not great. That's about 500 crowns worth of sword that I've lost. So no more forgers in the lands, but probably the Earl is not going to be pleased with me, as for some reason he still hasn't taken Kent. But the Baron's knocking on his door. I don't know what the Knight plans on doing, but we're going to see how quickly this game is going to end here in a little bit, because I have lost my window to kind of grab power here. Especially with the AI having the ability to... Uh, Rage troops without happiness penalties. It's just proving to be too much 
for me to try and fight. So there goes the knight. He is leaving himself defenseless right now, which is okay by me. I may be able to sneak in if he does that. Oh, wait, no, that's him going through Nottinghamshire. I was kind of had some wishful thinking that he'd be going to attack me in another place, but or he would be trying to withdraw his troops from the border here. But for now, for some reason, even though his people can't eat, they're still super happy. So right now I do have a good number of units. And I guess the other question is, do I want to try and take Cambridgeshire first and risk a big battle with the Earl? The Knight, he could just go in the back and sneak attack me if I leave this area undefended. So it's a tough choice. But I'm going to be getting some wool here. We gotta see what kind of mercenary action we can possibly get as well. 200 people in here. And the harvest wasn't terrible, it wasn't great, but. And now we're gonna focus a little more on keeping our lands upkept than maybe we had in the past. And that means I'm not building a castle right now, that means I'm only planting just a little bit of grain, that's okay. Because this is mostly a dairy economy right now. So here we go. Any mercenaries? Nope. And right here, fair and rumors of evil abroad, so I was almost able to overcome the bad, but I have not. I only have five happiness, which sucks, but ale fixes a lot of problems. Especially 64 crowns worth of it and Swedish swordsmen as well, so that's a very that's a very lucky break, because I can throw them right up against whatever forces come on. So in fact, what I could do here is try and take Cambridgeshire. It is possible that I'll be butting heads with the Earl soon, but I don't know. The Earl, he's kind of in a position of weakness, whereas the Knight is just spamming troops like crazy. It almost is more to my benefit just to try and combine these armies and take them on. So my upkeep situation is pretty tough, but I am doing good on my wool economy, and I don't think I could actually sell wool here. I don't have any wool to sell. But the Swedish swordsmen look nice. Nothing here. So we are going to, in fact, try and combine our armies. Because I don't want the Earl bringing everybody here right now. Let's see. This could be a really dumb move. But we're going to do it anyway. Because I'm going to have these guys defending my back end down here. So come on, Swedes, do your thing. Raise this army. 700 initial payment, 50 crowns. What a bargain. So I get some Danish swordsmen up here as well. And I could buy some more weapons. I don't even know what my weapon stockpiles look like. I have none. I had 100 swords and now I have zero. So that stinks just a little bit. So let's go ahead and buy some more swords. Just gotta buy those as I can get them. Even though watch like the greatest mercenaries of all time come next turn. So let me just go ahead and see, do I wanna march against the Earl here? Do I wanna try and do some economic damage? Do I just wanna keep these guys defensive here? Let me see, if I push into his county, I don't want the knight taking on my Danes. So I may march down here because that'll give me a chance to respond if the knight decides to hit me with my pants down. I am not a master of military strategist by any stretch of the imagination. But I do like to think of myself as someone who at least is competent in these kind of strategy games. So we're going to combine these armies. The 76 swords should complement the army that I have standing here very well. Give me 100 swordsmen, some extra peasants. So yeah, it'll have to do. I could probably actually spare a few more from that county, but for now we're just gonna... So here, do I need double rations? Yeah, I do need double rations right now. So let's see, in turn, kind of talking through these turns a lot here, where I know you all just want some action, action, action. But that's turn-based strategy. You don't always get the action that you want. Sometimes you get the action that you need. So here's the Earl fleeing. He can tell what I'm doing here. Somehow he has the spider sense to be able to say, those are a lot of troops. 
And is the knight too preoccupied with the Baron and trying to consolidate his forces? We're going to find out in a minute. So he's not marching against me right now, which is good. And the Countess says... Hear from reliable sources that the bishop will move against you soon. Well, good luck. He's on the total other side of England. It looks like the Baron is going to be playing with the knights. So if these guys continue to butt heads and throw troops at each other, that'll work in my favor. Oh, I just don't want the Baron to get too strong because he's extended very far to the east. If, I could, if the Countess would just attack him from the south, that'd be useful. So let's see. Right now, he's getting a lot of his troops together. And if I do overextend, that could be an issue. That garrison at Tentacle Castle is tiny, though. So let's start here. I have, unfortunately, I cannot buy arms from you. But I can sell a bunch of wool and notice the price change there. So 150 more Swedish swordsmen. Oh my god. Plague is terrible. Let's not do that. Death and panic. So this is one of my happier counties, and now people are dying everywhere. Not fun. So can I even afford the Swedes? Yes, I can. And it looks like they're just traveling through counties now. All right. So this pot, so this area is pretty much spent on population. There's not a lot I can do. Some of those sheep are just gonna die. It looks like I'm probably going to lose a field. Maybe, maybe not. I've already lost one field. That's probably me being irresponsible a turn before. So let's see, we are going to get the Swedes up here just to be a backup defense force. I always prefer Danish if I can get it, but that means I can keep this unit here and really try and apply the pressure. Unfortunately, I only have 50 swords, so we will go ahead and do the sword drop for 56% of the total population. Doesn't They're like, whatever, dog. I can't believe I just said dog and kind of slurred my words there a little bit. So we are going to, in fact, let's make sure we got the right army first. 50 swordsmen. I'm going to raise 50 peasants as well, because right now my peasant meat shield is down to 9, and that's that's not fooling anybody. So are we going to be stupid and move against the Earl? At this rate, I don't know if I have much of a choice. So down there is a good start. Let's go ahead and combine these armies. Let's go ahead and combine these armies. No. Don't want to combine that because splitting the army is going to be a pain later. Combine these armies. And can I get just a few more peasants up in here? 100 peasants. We don't want to do 12% of the population. We want to raise them just a little bit at a time. And our happiness is still decent. Our fields are going to be unattended. Our, we're apparently taking from a, our herding population. But that means less people are needing to eat as well. And I could possibly sell some cattle here to try and get some money. Because I don't need that many. So let's do that. Let's sell 20. It's good money. I can bank it for later. So there's 50, 50 peasants. They're fair morale. So here is my first kind of, not ball of death army, but really the combined arms, kind of mid-game army that I was hoping to put on the backs of my other forces later. So woohoo! How many forces do we have? Over 400, barely. These men are loyal. They really rely on the crossbowmen. So it's going to be interesting to see if the Earl decides to uh, strike hard and fast. Or if the Knight decides to say, hey, you're distracted. So let's just make sure I got all my counties in order. Because we are playing offense by offense. I guess, and just really hoping that, say, the Countess decides to attack that... Just something happens that makes the Earl not just want to go and fight me, so... Assault by the Bishop. And here we go. I'm probably awakening the Sleeping Dragon of the Earl's armies. And there we go. So he's not marching on me yet. He's playing defensively. 
and here comes the knight moving even more forces down because magically he can whip all of his peasants into shape. It's not like some special ability he has. He just apparently gets to do that because he's the AI. So lots of tiny castles to besiege. So it looks like we're, we may possibly be getting our first siege here, but first things first, we're going to have to take on a pretty brutal army here. So rumors of evil abroad, but my happiness is still good. Uh, do I need to pay some ale? Not really. Notice how little income I'm making that's not wool, though. And that's just from having such a large standing army. So there we go. Bright and good for happy crops. We'll just let you all go just a little bit. Down here we have wolves, which make people unhappy. We are going to go ahead and get off of double rations here in just a little bit. Because at this rate, we don't even really need these farmers. And I'm going to be losing another sheep regardless of what I do. So while that stinks, I don't actually really have the population, it looks like, to support what I'm trying to do here. Livestock population, okay. So let's see, how far can I drop down and not lose one? So there's one there. So yeah, what I need here is more people. And maybe, maybe tripling the ration will do that, but then I'll run out of food. So immigrants to Cambridge, sure, I'm hoping to change that. So the question now is, do we move in on the Earl? And I think the answer is probably going to be yes. Because I'd, I'd love to have some more stuff to sell. I could raise my taxes. But I just have so few people right now, it's not really going to do me a ton of good. So let's see if I can go ahead and take you on. If I can hurt, put a dent in a standing army, it's going to be in good shape, but... That is 600 versus 400, the pigs versus the lords. And, oh my god, it's just a bunch of peasants. Wow. Okay. So this is this changes how this is going to play out just a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and drop you all up here, and we're just going to let these guys go to work. Now, I would love it if I had more swordsmen. I really would, but... Let's see, right now they can't actually hit. So we have to kind of wait for them to start marching, it looks like. So let's go ahead and pull these guys back because the Earl very wisely is just going to sit and wait and hope that I move my guys in position to get slaughtered. So there's my peasant meat shield going to the front. And there we go, first, first line. So that's who he's sending first. Their morale is very high to mine, not very high, but as you'll see, I'm going to start mowing down these peasants in a hurry. So here's my first distraction peasants going forward. And we are going to send some swordsmen in to try and occupy these forces ASAP. They're going to get surrounded. They may die a noble death, but as long as they don't get my archers. I think I might actually be able to do this as long as I can keep this back troop from actually engaging these guys. Which I don't know if that's going to happen. It looks like these guys are going to make a beeline. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. The big threat is not the swordsman. So right now I've lost a lot of troops, but if he's really going with 600 units... Come on, let's go ahead and actually fire a shot here. I don't know why you all stopped firing your weapons. There we go. So my peasants are gone. But notice I've already cleared half of his forces between my swordsmen and my crossbowmen. So that's where I just have superior forces in place. And as much as I don't want to have to reinforce this with peasants, it looks like I'm going to have to. Because I don't have a ton of swordsmen left, but I have plenty enough. So they disperse. I killed 600 of them, and a bunch of them lie dead. So there's my act of aggression against the Earl. I have awoken the sleeper, as it were. 
And I do have my Danish Swordsman that I can move down and possibly take on as well. But there's the strength of having archers. There's the strength of a combined arms force. So unfortunately I already moved this army because I'd love to move them into support. I can't combine mercenary armies. But I guess what I'm going to have to do here is just raise 100 more peasants. That's 12% of the population, so I'm going to take a happiness hit. I am going to double up the rations though, just for this round. Because it looks like I'll be able to do that without much penalty. So what we're going to do now is just move these guys. Can I combine forces? Not till next turn. So we'll move up here, and we're going to try and put some pressure on. Maybe get a siege going. But yeah, that is just bonkers that he just throws a bunch of peasants at me as now the Earl is like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Here comes another attack. So it looks like we may be sieging a castle next turn. And that's where I want some peasants. Here comes the knight. Please don't backdoor me, knight. I would not like that at all. Because you're already trying to take on the baron, which is good. You can just keep throwing stuff at the baron. You can have your little distraction force down there. Oh boy. So now he's making his play. So there's a forge. I don't know if the earl and the knight have an alliance or not. Maybe they do. It all depends on if he tries to attack me or not. So he's going to backdoor me from the other end as a bunch of castles finish. So that would kind of stink. There's the Baron saying, the knight's going to march against me this year. Thanks, Baron. I've heard you're trying to march against me as well, considering how many people have uh, broken alliances against me. So I almost want to just see, is it going to be better for me? Because he, can, he can't reach me this turn which is awesome. I have no idea how many forces that is. I do know that I can do this and possibly hit the knight next turn. If I move my forces there, it's going to be more likely. We, we just want to get as close to the road as we can in here. So obviously he's marching for Cambridgeshire and obviously he's marching towards me. Let's go ahead and combine these armies. I don't actually know if I'll be able to start the siege this turn while combining them, but you know what? Let's go ahead and put 100 peasants in there. You have no powers as a sheriff. And no, when combined forces, you can't actually do that. So we'll see if we can start a siege next turn. The Earl is not currently marching north. I imagine the Countess is causing a little bit of a threat here as his holdings are going down down and down so gift of grain from abroad so now I can actually triple ration if I want to so we're gonna be getting some uh, harvest time goodness in here and you know what I almost just want to say screw the harvest it's not gonna do us a lot of good but it's better to get some grain than no grain even though I'm not gonna have nearly enough so let's hear, my income is terrible right now. I'm actually losing money right now because I have so much army to support. Let's actually look at my crowns. I'm losing money. Part of the reason is just because I'm paying so much wages. So in fact, oh wow, so I get actually some really good ripening. So I'm gonna need to sell some stuff to a merchant. That's a good sign. And I don't really probably need to ail you guys very much. So we're not even going to bother with that. So let's sell here. Get 300 something crowns, which doesn't do me a lot of good. I have a little too much of a standing army. So now that we can see where the opposing forces are moving, we are going to go ahead and take some of our other mercenaries and drop them in here as well. Because that's 50 wages. How many are you? 66 wages. And this is my most expensive army. So it's because I'm losing population so much that they're just emigrating or I'm not getting enough of a tax base. So I'm going to hold on to my crowns. Once again, there's some specific mercenaries that I really want, but at this point I got to make sure that it might don't make I don't bankrupt the kingdom. So let's see. Getting all my flag boys in here. We'll see if the knight's actually marching against me or if he's marching against the earl. So there's another army from the Earl. Is, is he going to fight the Baron? Okay, so 300 more yeoman from Cambridgeshire. 
Holy cow. So once again, you can see from the happiness there that the Earl just gets to raise whatever the hell he wants, much like the Knight. So it puts me at a huge disadvantage. Huge disadvantage. And what we're actually going to try and do here is protect um, our peasants as best we can. No, we don't want to move our peasants down there. We actually want to move them over here. And we want to force these guys to go through the swamp. That's not going to work. Okay, well, I was hoping to force these guys through the swamp, but it looks like it's just going to be just a little bit too much of a bunch. So I just had to take a quick pause there, but just to reevaluate the situation, it's just a matter of these guys are coming and I'm, they're going to be marching all the way over there, so I can't really get the swamp advantage I was hoping for now. Not with the miss move of these guys. So what we're just going to do is to stop and fire, put the peasant meat wall out in front, and put the swordsman behind. Now I actually do want these peasants around for whatever sieging is going to be happening here. But for now, these guys are really going to get mowed down first and foremost. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Go ahead and quick pause there, and let's move the peasants in first. Then we'll move the swordsmen in. I mean, the peasants are a little bit more disposable, but at this rate, we've just really got to make sure that we protect our crossbows, because those are going to be our heavy hitters that end this fight in a hurry. So you can see they just fire, fire, fire. I can switch them to whatever other unit here. Because my peasants are unhappy, I want to make sure they don't run away. And there's our devastating... Okay, so the enemy's withdrawn. Do they disperse? No. Which sucks. So I have to do some mop-up and... Oh, shit. So here is... How many more peasants? So 300. So just double attack. He's dropped 600 people on me, which is just awful. But my morale of my troops, notice my troops have a much higher morale. I'm actually going to put the swordsmen in front of the peasants this time. Like I said, I want the peasants for the meat shield. But I also need them for the sieging later. So we're going to go ahead and stop here drop you guys down because once again I'm not going to be able these guys are just going to march straight past the marsh at this point so there's not much point for me to try and stop them I'll just let you guys go see how many of you all I can take out notice they have 34 morale once again this is the Earl raising army upon army that has its own army And he gets to do it, apparently without a happiness hit, which is important, and it's a factor that's not in Lords of the Realm too. is we have some of my peasants just circling around the crossbow, and they're smart, they're not getting straight in harm's way. So can I actually take out these forces? I'd love to see him just go, their morale's so high though, that maybe I should try and offer him a quarter here in a moment. See, so there's under a third, and they disperse. So that's one force gone. I lost 38 people. I probably lost some swords there, which is unfortunate. But now the Countess is moving. Please, Countess, actually stop, start moving against the Earl. That'd be great. No, it doesn't look like that's happening. And here comes the Knight. That's really going to kind of make my day if he decides to go after somebody else. But he is going for... I don't know. I don't like that move. Because what that tells me is that he is allies with the Earl. And I am literally stuck between a rock and a hard place. So we're going to look at my counties real quick. We see here that I still have a good number of troops, but not as many as I used to have. Still some peasants. And I'm going to be trying to clean up with some swordsmen here. Can I actually move the Danes into position. No, I can't. Not this turn. So a little bit of a misplay there. But not too much I can do about it now. So let's look at our counties real quick and we're going to call this an episode. Very eventful. Did not foresee myself taking on the Earl at all, but if the Earl and the Knight are being bedfellows, then I'm just going to have to take them both out. So like I said before, 
or like I've said in comments before, I'm used to dominating the computer in this game. This is a nice change, a nice challenge, but to be honest, it is playing out very differently than I imagined. So we got triple ration going on here. We're going to go ahead and tone that back down to double ration because we just want our population to start recovering here. And in fact, I think I am just going to ditch the grain field this year. And we're going to focus on herding and we're going to focus on field recovery. Though I may not have the population to do both. That's okay. So there we go. Any mercenaries, nothing good. Maybe they'll stir up next time. Not that I have the money to really do a lot. But yeah, my pop, my county's population is going up. But for now, it's just going to be a matter of Cambridge is going to be a huge meat grinder. And if the Earl's not going to take on, or if the Knight's not going to take on the Earl, then he's obviously marching for me. So chances are, if I can't work my crossbow magic... Uh, that this county is going to be in trouble, or maybe I should make evasive maneuvers and try and come back. It's not like I've started a siege yet. But I don't want, but I got my backside to worry about as well because the Earl has a huge force. I imagine it's mostly peasants. But all the computer can do is just raise armies, raise armies, raise armies like it's nothing. So I don't know if I can compete with that, but damn it, I'm going to try. This is way to fail. Once again, attempting to conquer England and Lords of the Realm. But that's all for now. I will see you all next time.